Hey everyone, Steve Margia with Class A Surfacing. Today I want to talk a little bit about surface complexity. This is a huge subject. This is something that we can go on for hours and hours about, but I want to just give you a basic understanding because I know a lot of people have a uh, having a hard time kind of grasping what is the surface complexity. Now here I have a, a surface. It has an inflection point, which means it reverses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the surface and I'm going to say show knot points. Now here you can see this is a location on the surface, what's called a knot. Now uh, the terminology is an old terminology. It's been around for hundreds of years. It's basically like, the word spline is an old shipbuilding terminology and knot point is shipbuilding terminology and so on. So a lot of these are old terminologies and we can get into those another time. But a knot point is basically where two curves, two surfaces come together internally. So this is internal math to that surface. So in, in, in actuality, the surface technically has two surfaces coming together with an invisible boundary. So that means there is a continuity between those two surfaces at that boundary. Now, um, if I go to poles, you'll notice, okay, that's my control polygon for that surface. So um, if I were to try to use this surface and manipulate that surface, because of this knot point, if I make a modification to this end, I'd get almost no modification or zero modification, depending on how complex this is, at the opposite end. Whereas if this were one big, long surface, that does not necessarily hold true. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to go into Surface, and I'm going to go to Xform, pick this surface. So um, let's just say Polygon. Actually, no, I want to go Normal, where it was. I'm going to pick this. And I'm going to move this. And as you can see, the opposite end over here, almost nothing happens. But you can see here I have a multiple patch surface. So I'm just going to exit out to reset this, go into X form, pick my surface. This time I'm going to reduce my patch count. Now you'll notice as soon as I reduce my patch count, this thing goes almost perfectly straight. And I get a massive amount of deviation here. So what I need to do to get that back or closer is increase my control points. Okay, so in order to get it relatively close, you can see it's still deviating just about two mils. I have to increase the amount of math. There we go, this is less than a mil off. There we go, less than half a mil. I can take this back down to that too. So over here, you can see it's still pretty far out. So in order to get that, what that multiple patch uh, or knotted surface, um, get it close, I have to, as you can see, increase the degree. Now, if I come in here and I move this end, once again, let's go to normal, pick you, pick this, there we go. You can see, because of the level of complexity, I get very little movement or if no movement at all at this point over here because, again, of that level of complexity. Okay, you can see it stops somewhere in this area because these control points, these rows of control points are holding that fast because of the amount of math. If I, again, reduce the amount of math, now I'm going to, again, be deviating off of the original quite considerably, and I go move this row, you'll notice that the manipulation goes all the way back to here rather than stopping somewhere up here because again, the amount of math that's involved. I'm just gonna exit out. Now to give you an example of uh, how complex each individual surface is, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say snip into patches, pick that, and what this is going to do is it's gonna snip it, you can see, I'm just gonna hide the original, into two separate patches. This is These are the two patches, internal patches, that we didn't see before. So now when I come into my analysis and pick these guys, show control points, show knot points, you see there's no knot points. But for my my poles on that, on that surface, you'll see I have one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, complexity is the same in the opposite direction. Now if I show this body initially, you can see it they sit right on top of each other. And in this case, you can see those are my control points. I have one, two, there's nothing here at this bridge, four, five. So 
at that knot point, I don't have a row of control points. The surface is joined. Okay, so what this does is again, it sort of acts as an anchor, right? The sort of acts as if I make a manipulation to this to this row of uh, control points, that manipulation really doesn't travel beyond that knot unless I start manipulating this row or this row, and then this is when it starts affecting that area. So it's that level of complexity in the surfaces that we have to be careful of when we're making at least our um, minimally our primary slabs. We want to make sure our primary slabs are relatively simple, as simple as can be, because our secondary and tertiary surfaces, all of our blends and such, are going to be at minimum as complex as the primaries combined. Okay, so if I need a curvature continuous uh, G2 or even G3 blend, if this is a very complex surface, that blend is going to have that level of complexity built up in it. Now, the reason why I'm getting into this is because I had a question about I-form. So if I go back into surface and I go into I-form, I'm going to pick this. You'll notice as soon as I pick it, I get a lot more control points. Okay, I get a lot more control points. You see all these additional control points that showed up. If I make just a simple modification to this row, Okay, or if I come in here and I make a modification to this row, you'll see all of those control points and additional knot points that are coming in to the model in order to maintain that shape. Because remember, we're modifying the actual ISO curves. So if we're modifying the actual ISO curve of that surface, I have a lot more complexity that needs to go in there to actually get that shape rather than a control point. Um, so here you can see by doing something as simple as that, I've actually increased that surface complexity quite considerably. Now, if I go back into my surface, snip to patches and pick that, select OK, you'll notice I have, oops, sorry, 15 objects. So you can see that I have a very complex shape because of this simple I form that I used. And that's why when you're using I-Form, you have to be careful to not overly complicate the surface that you're working with because it can get really complex really quickly. And the issue with these surfaces that we form, right, if I take a look at this, okay, actually, let me, let me do this. I'm going to hide this. I'm going to show this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Analysis. I'm going to pick this. I'm just going to turn these off. I'm going to go into menu, I'm going to go to information and B surface and pick my surface. I want to show my boundaries, poles, output to listing window. Select my surface, select OK. Now this listing window that comes up on my other screen, you'll see here it tells me exactly what's going on. This is a 3x3 three three polynomial and I have number of poles, 6 in the U, 9 in the V. And if I come down here, you'll see I have these seams. These are these in invisible or internal seams, internal seams that I was talking about earlier. You'll see I have one that's a C1 seam, and I have three that are uh, C2 seams. And that's in the V direction. And then in the, in the U direction, I have two that are um, C2. Basically, C and C1 and C2 are similar to the G1 and G2. Uh, one is more mathematic representation of boundary conditions versus a geometric representation of boundary conditions. They do give you something slightly different. Um, internally, that's what the math does in NX. It gives you a C2 type of continuity. That's an old, this goes, remember NX goes back 40 years and everything was based off of math. So, but you can see here, a number of patches I have is three and five. So there's my 15, total of 15. I have three in the U, five in the V patches. Now, as I go through this and I look at this, you'll see one of those patches is the C1 seam. What does that mean? Well, that means that these guys, one of them in there, is not perfectly smooth, is not G2. Okay. Now, let me do a refresh actually. There we are. So, what I'm going to do next is if I go into analysis and you can see relation. And I want to see uh, surface continuity, for instance. And I'm going to pick these guys. And I want to say G1. All right. G2, you can see here I start getting surface, internal surface breaks. All right. 
Now, the rest of these are pretty good, but this is the one that we really have to worry about. So internally, I have a surface break. So if I want something that's perfectly curvature continuous, good luck building something off of something like this, right? Because you have an internal seam that is not perfectly uh, smooth, like G2 in this case. This is just a G1. It is smooth, but it may not have that acceleration that you're looking for. So this is one of the reasons why we try to minimize the amount of patches, internal patches that we have is because in those internal seams, in those knot points as they're called, or those knots, you don't know exactly what type of transition you have, and you can't control that. That is something that you can't control. The system controls that. Okay, the system lords over that and you do not determine the type of continuity that that has across those internal boundaries. Okay, so again, this is a huge subject. This is a very big topic and I can go on for hours about this, but I'm going to leave it at this for now and get into this in additional talks later on. Um, again, so part of the reason why uh, we want to maintain simple surfaces is because of things like this, because of uncontrollable results. Okay, so we talked a little bit about knots, uh, splitting about patches, and I'll talk more about some of those functions in another lecture as well. But uh, you get to see, for the most part, why the surface complexity is so important, and especially for downstream users, if you are sending this off to somebody to machine, the, those additional patches could cause problems potentially with chatter and minimum small radii and all sorts of issues. But anyway, that's uh, my, uh, my opening into the complexity of surfaces and the complexity of curves. And this is a huge subject, which we'll talk more about later on. If you like my video, please like and subscribe, share with your friends, invite them to join the channel and ask questions. I like questions. I like, uh, I like it when people interact with me and give me ideas to talk about things because I don't know what you need. I just, uh, I know what I like to talk about. Anyway, have a great day. Thank you.